This uh, is a live view from the International Space Station where we're able to get a view of uh, Starliner's track as it comes in. We are now uh, less than 10 minutes away from landing at the White Sands Space Harbor, scheduled for uh, 10 or 11 p.m. Central. Also uh, getting reports that the WB-57 is also able to see Starliner now as it begins coming in for its uh, for its landing. We've still got just about a minute left to go before Starliner comes out of its uh, blackout period. And this is the view from the WB-57, one of uh, NASA's aircraft that is uh, at the uh, landing site has been uh, been uh, staged and ready to pick a Starliner or uh, pick up the view of Starliner as it comes in, and that is what we are seeing now. And the, they're filming this video from about 16,000 feet. The WB-57 should continue to uh, give us a view until the drogue parachutes deploy and then we hope to pick it up with the Cessna that is also in the area. And flight controllers here in the room are reporting that we are out of that blackout period and everything is looking good. Starliner remaining nominal as she returns to Earth. Again, this is a view from the WB-57. Starliner showing a beautiful streak across the sky as she returns to White Sands, New Mexico. We're about three minutes away from the forward heat shield jettison. That's the next milestone we're looking for. Starliner is currently about 27 miles above the Earth, and the team at uh, White Sands reporting that they have seen it. We got a tally hole from them uh, reported uh, remotely. That means they are seeing Starliner from the ground there in New Mexico. This view is coming from the Cessna that's also in the area, picking up uh, Starliner, now, Starliner now from its lower altitude, about 6,000 feet above, whereas the WB-57 is about 16,000 feet up. We are now just uh, six minutes and 22 seconds away from landing. We should also just be a couple minutes away from the forward heat shield jettison, which will bring on the drogue parachute deploy, followed by the main parachutes. And the strobe lights on Starliner are now on. Starliner is now over the landing site and that strobe light will help the teams actually track Starliner on the ground because it is very dark out there. Now about 12 miles above uh, the landing site and just five minutes away from landing.
Watching now for the forward heat shield jettison that should be coming up uh, again, making way from the, for the parachute deployment. All right, and that action you're seeing on your screen, forward heat shield and drogues out. Really interesting view of this uh, coming down from the WB-57. See those two drogue parachutes uh, now deployed. They slow the uh, vehicle down initially until it gets to a, uh, a safe uh, speed for the enormous main parachutes to, to follow. About four minutes to go until touchdown. Now back to a view from the Cessna aircraft in the uh, vicinity of the landing site. Again, this is a, a view from a little lower than the WB-57 we were seeing. The next thing we're going to see here is the three main parachutes come out and everything will happen pretty quickly from that point on. After those mains are out, we'll see the uh, bottom heat shield that has been protecting uh, Starliner through its journey through the atmosphere come off. That makes way for the landing airbags to deploy. And there's the main parachutes there on your screen. We see three out. Currently reefing. And the teams at the uh, landing uh, recovery teams report that they heard uh, the booms as those came out. Three good mains fully open there. You can see Starliner in a slight tilt, so we're going to see the rotation handle move here shortly and it will level out Starliner. But three good parachutes, looking great. Just a little over two minutes until the expected landing time and we heard the rotational handle has been released. So you can see that uh, tilt evened out. Next up is the back heat shield jettison. And there it goes. That again makes way for the airbag inflation. Nice to see that. You can see the airbags deploying there on your screen. Those airbags are filled with nitrogen as they guide Starliner safely back to the desert floor. Just a beautiful sight as Starliner makes its way to the sands of New Mexico. And flight controllers confirming six good airbags. This view still coming to us from the Cessna. We've got uh, about just about a minute left to go until the expected touchdown. We'll be watching for that time for you. just about 15 seconds away from expected touchdown. You're seeing the ground there in your screen as we get closer.
Touchdown. Starliner is back on Earth. That landing coming at 11.01 and 35 seconds Central Time, 10.01 and 31 seconds Mountain Time at White Sand Space Harbor at the U.S. Army's Missile Range in New Mexico. Our landing and recovery teams will now wait for clearance before making their way to the spacecraft. One of the changes uh, required with no crew on board is that the team here in the flight control room will be the ones to uh, command the uh, parachute uh, to be cut away so that uh, the wind doesn't pull the capsule along, but uh, that's no problem for them. So uh, now with, uh, with Starliner down, they can begin working on some of the post-landing to-do items. Again, uh, we saw Starliner touchdown at 11.01 p.m. Central Time. That's uh, one minute after midnight.